Hello YouTube, Dave here again. Uh, today I just want to talk about some basic table etiquette guidelines that I think new players, or really all players in general, should be aware of before joining a D&D game. Uh, so once a month I run a Dungeons & Dragons game from Giant Robot Comics. Uh, we did start off by strictly adhering to Adventurers League, D&D Adventurers League, and it was fun for our time, but at the same time I wanted to sort of push things along and I'm running Tomb of Annihilation, and I just feel that the, the pacing of the adventure is a little bit off. Um, the early stuff can take a long time to go through, but the adventure presents itself as being something that's timely. So I <clears throat> started uh, decided that, you know, we'll talk about it, and uh, that way I can sort of interject my own encounters and my own scenarios and try to get them experience points built up to the point where they can enter the Tomb of the Nine Gods, because really that's what the adventure is all about. Uh, so that aside, um, this past game, which was yesterday at the time that I'm recording this, uh, we did have a new player join the group, and it, he was a younger guy, I think he was, I think he said he was 17, and it was awesome to see someone, you know, of that age, that enthusiastic for Dungeons and Dragons, but there were some issues with the way that the player had conducted themselves at the table. So I just wanted, like I said, discuss just a few general guidelines, some expectations of behaviors, or just some things that you should, you know, try to keep in mind when you join a Dungeons & Dragons game, especially if you're doing one that's being run at a store or events or things along those lines. So one of the biggest things is paying attention to the Dungeon Master and letting the Dungeon Master describe the scenario or the situations that are going on. There were a few times when um, you know I was interrupted while trying to explain something, you know, with the player having questions about other things that they wanted to do, and you know it's one of those things that I, one of the other players at the table just said, you know, let him say what he's going to say, or you're going to miss things, and you know we're all going to be, uh, you know, uh, better or worse off because of it. And it's just one of those things that yeah, if the dungeon master is describing what's going on, or describing a location, or describing anything really, is if it's in game and they're describing things that are in-game, let the Dungeon Master speak, and if you have questions when they're done, feel free to ask at that point. Uh, along those lines, if you're in a combat situation and we're on a certain player, uh, on another player's turn that isn't yours, hold off on your questions until it comes to your turn. I would rather your turn take a little bit longer as you're trying to figure out exactly what you want to do, especially if you're new. I don't expect new players to be experts of their characters as soon as they join the game, but if you have questions about your abilities or your spells or what you can do on your turn, save it for your turn, not during someone else's. Uh, another one of the things that um, the player ended up doing uh, a couple of times or trying to do, and you know I'm, I wasn't going to allow it, was rolling dice in advance of their turn. Um, and the reason that I don't like that, I mean, <clears throat> you could say that, oh, it's, you know, it's efficient for when their turn comes, but at the same time, how many times are they just idly rolling their dice before they get some good numbers? And since I'm paying attention to the other person's turn, I don't see what they're doing all the time. And when I see, like, a 15, 17, and 20 on the dice, you know, for their... Uh, scorching ray attacks or whatever, it's just, it's a little bit suspect to me, so it's one of those things that don't roll for your actions until it's your turn. Uh, it's really important because, you know, like I said, myself as a dungeon master, I would never allow a player to store their dice rolls. So, you know, if you roll a natural 20 and you want to hold on to that for your next action, that's too bad because you were, you know, rolling the dice when it wasn't actually your turn. Um, so don't roll something until it's your turn, and don't roll something until the DM asks for it. Um, so just, again, just some, some simple basic uh, guidelines that, you know, I think are kind of important. Um, the other thing that I would say is important is, you know, read up or know what your spell does as best as you can um, before you cast it. So um, since I'm running at a store, I don't want to take a whole bunch of books with me. I just take what I can fit in the backpack because if there's weather, which, you know, in Nova Scotia this time of year, there's almost always weather, uh, I don't want my books getting damaged. So I take my player's handbook, my dungeon master's guide, my monster manual, and the adventure that I'm running. I don't bring all the other, uh, you know, supplements or books with me. If the players are using something from another book, my expectation is that they would have it there with them. Um, and this was the case. The player did have access and had their own books for their spells and everything else. The spell in question was, um, I think it was Melf's Minute Meteors, 
And the reason that, um, the, the issue that kind of came up several times is, you know, when he was saying that, you know, he throws the, 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 me the little meteor <coughs> and it impacts and then it does, you know, damage. The questions that I kept having is, because, again, I don't bring Xanathar's Guide with me because I still have to fit, like, you know, the miniatures, I have to fit the DM screen, I have to fit my adventure grid and all that stuff in the backpack and it gets kind of heavy. <coughs> so the question that I asked is, do the meteors hit multiple, like is it an area of effect, or is it just single target? And when it says, when you say that you hit them with the meteor, does that do damage? Like are you doing something that requires an attack roll, hits them for bludgeoning damage, and then explodes for fire? Like these are things that, you know, I think would be the basic questions. And we had to go over that two or three times, and it reached the point where I had to borrow someone else's book. Um, so I can go through and, you know, read everything. If I were running at home, I would have all my books, you know, handy at the table, but again, I don't want to, if I have to walk home, like if my fiance is not able to come pick me up and it starts raining out, I don't want my books to get water damaged. So I can only carry, you know, a finite number in the, uh, the backpack that I have, which is actually hers. I really need to get a new one because, um, hers is kind of not a color that I would normally use, but anyway. Uh, so, but again, just by, you know, being able to answer that one simple question, is it area of effect or single target? Um, you know, knowing all the other effects um, aren't necessarily such a big deal, but just being able to answer that one question would have saved a significant amount of time. And the first encounter that we had did go longer than I think it needed to. I mean, they were fighting some frost giants that had a lot of hit points and stuff. <clears throat> But there were still a few too many times where I had to try to get clarification on the spell that they were using. So it's one of those things that I think from now on I may start taking my Xanathar's Guide to Everything cards. Um, I haven't opened the second bundle yet, actually, that's inside. Um, but I may have to start taking those. And uh, just so I can sort of know these things without having to... Because, again, I'm not going to be able to take the book. There's just not enough room with everything else that I'm carrying with me. So having at least a fundamental idea of what your spells do. If you have other questions about it, you can certainly ask that. Like, <clears throat> for example, if you said, well, you know, it hits an area, like it goes out a certain number of feet, but it says that it impacts against a solid surface, so if the question was, would that deal damage, then we could consult what the spell says. But, uh, again, that was kind of a simple, basic part of the spell, which should have been one of the easiest things to, to have understood. Another thing is... <clears throat> A question that came up specifically about that spell is because um, I, you know, they were aware of the giants approaching a round or two before they got to them. Uh, I guess it was a round. I gave them the opportunity to cast one uh, preparatory spell, and the player wanted to cast the Melf's Minute Meteors, which is fine. Um, but the question that I have is, you know, is it something that happens instantaneously? Like, does the spell effect go off immediately? Or is it something that you can concentrate on and then do later? Because it did say that it created these little meteors that orbit your head. So the question that I had was, you know, can you, um, do you, do you use them all at once? Is it like an immediate thing or what, you know, how does the spell work? Because, you know, it's not a spell that I've used. As a dungeon master, I don't get to use a lot of spells. <clears throat> so, um, so it was just, you know, a simple question. And it, again, it took a little bit too long. To kind of get to the simple answer of, you know, you can cast it and then you concentrate to keep those meteors going around your head and then on your turn as a bonus action, you uh, <clears throat> you can throw them. So, uh, up to two of them. So anyway, I learned a lot about that spell, um, but it was one of those things that it would have been nice if the player would have, like, sat down and read the description a little bit more thoroughly so that those simple questions could have been answered. Uh, the other thing that I find when it comes to table etiquette is, um, and this is something that I think applies to everyone, and it was something that happened a few times with uh, another player as well at the table, and that is the idea of asking about a you know a particular target on the on the you know enemy that you're facing, and then when you roll and you think you've rolled a bit too low, suddenly say that you are actually attacking the other one. Uh, so the example that I have with this is <clears throat> I had uh, inserted a black dragon into the uh, lost city of Amu. <clears throat> and the story was that um, the... Uh, so I used the NPC Bag of Nails, who was looking for the Navel of the Moon, which is an artifact or a relic that you can find uh, in the Tomb of the Nine Gods. But, um, you know, there was something that he wanted to do with his son, and I again, I wanted to sort of change that around and make it sort of a bit more of an interesting scenario. So I had Bag of Nails arrive in Amu with his son in search of this item. 
And then they were, you know, attacked by this black dragon who kidnapped the son and was forcing Bag of Nails to explore the nearby t um, tombs or the shrines to get the puzzle cubes uh, in order to gain entry to the, uh, the Tomb of the Nine Gods. And so when Bag of Nails encounters the player characters, he's looking for worthy people. Now, the, uh, so he takes them back and, he, you know, they had a, a one, you know, brief encounter where he used his, uh, you know, uh, assassinate ability, scored a critical hit on one of the characters who didn't go down. <clears throat> so Bag of Nails was very impressed by that because it was a lot of damage. Um, so he invited them all back, um, and I followed through with the stew and the uh, Tears of Midnight, I think it was, the uh, the poison that was in it, and the idea was that he wanted to trade the player characters um, for his son, and he didn't think he'd be able to do that uh, with the players going willingly, <laughs> and he you know didn't want to risk the players running in through into the dragon's lair and the dragon you know killing his son in response. So the idea was that he was going to incapacitate the players, um, and they were he was going to offer them to the black dragon. So they were going to be knocked unconscious. Um, and, you know, taken to this, this lair. So, it, it did happen. Um, the, uh, the, the characters, a couple of the characters actually weren't knocked out by the poison, so the, uh, Bag of Nails, and he did have a couple of Yonti that defected from Ross Nisi to this dragon. And, uh, <clears throat> so they helped, um, incapacitate the other two. The characters found themselves, they awoke in a cell, you know, one of the players had a set of thieves tools that they would hide on themselves, so... They were able to pick their way out, and they went in, and so they had uh, they encountered Bag of Nails because they came out early. So Bag of Nails, uh, the Black Dragon, uh, the Bag of Nails' son, who was um, at I think like one hit point or zero hit points <coughs> at the time that they uh, at, at the time that they entered, and these two um, Yonti uh, Malisons, I think I can't I can't remember that's the exact name. So what ended up happening was. Uh, one of the players who was playing a ranger was using their Hail of Thorns ability, and they were targeting, um, so the so the dragon was in one spot, and you had the Yonti within five feet of the dragon, which is fine, and then you had uh, Bag of Nails, I think, was also within five feet of the uh, of the dragon. I can tell a story about that in another video, but, uh, so the player's like, <clears throat> so if I hit the dragon, uh, the Hail of Thorns will go out five feet from, from where the dragon is, so it'll hit this person, and then it'll hit that person, right? And I was like, yep, yeah, it will. So they uh, they make their attack roll, and um, <clears throat> they got below what the dragon's armor class was. Um, the dragon's armor class was 18, I think they got 16 or 15. And so I was like, well, you know, unfortunately that misses. And he's like, well, no, I was targeting I was targeting the, uh, the auntie. And it's like, mm, you didn't say that. And he's like, well, I just, you know, that's who I would have gone after because they're easier to hit. And it's like... But all the questions that you had centered around you attacking the dragon. So for me, it's not a wild intuitive leap if you say, if I hit the dragon, then this person and this person will be affected by this spell, right? <clears throat> Having the answer be yes, and then saying, okay, well, I'm going to attack somebody else instead. And it's like, that didn't make sense to me, and it just felt like the player, you know, wanted to... Want, didn't want to, you know, have an attack miss. So they tried to s redirect it towards something else, and it's like, no, 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 you were talking specifically about attacking the dragon and everything was based off of if you hit the dragon so if you're going to switch targets you have to say then i'm going to hit the auntie instead like you have to say that before you can't just look at your attack result and then say "Ooh, that's not so great and then say well this is who i was going after so if you pick a target in combat please stick to that target and don't try to change to something you think you can hit easier because you would have missed it's one of those things, it's kind of a pet peeve, you know. Again, if you're talking all about attacking this one enemy, and then you make a roll without saying anything otherwise, then in my mind, you're attacking that enemy, and that's the way that it should be. Uh, so, yeah, just a couple of things that have happened, and just, again, just some simple guidelines, and I don't think I'm being unreasonable with any of these. Uh, so let me know if you guys think that that may be a little bit much, if I'm putting a bit too much pressure on people, or if I'm being a bit unreasonable, let me know, but I think those are pretty simple, common uh, things. Um, I guess the last piece of advice I would have is if you're playing, I guess I'll tell the, the story a little bit about the 
and the dragon here now instead. So the one last thing is, if you're going to use area of effect spells, um, be aware of your surroundings. <clears throat> so one of the things that the player kind of kept joking about, um, this newer player, is that um, all of his spells are area of effect, and he was expecting to, you know, have you know player characters, you know, get caught in the in you know in the areas more than once, and it was almost like it was sort of a joke. And in my opinion, that's not a good way to be playing uh, the game. Um, you know, there are certain situations where a player may say, you know what, just go ahead and do it. Um, that's, that's fine, you know, I'll, I'll soak the damage, you know, but, you know, if it takes out these individuals, then that's okay. And I've seen situations like that. <clears throat> you know, I've been in situations where I've said, you know, to another player, and this is going back a ways, but um, they wanted to throw a, a fireball and it would have caught me. It's like, but it probably would have killed all the other enemies in the room as well. And we were all pretty beat up, so it was to the point where if you don't do it, then we may all die. So I let them cast the fireball, I said, don't worry about me. I got caught in it, and I think my character... I think my character survived, but it was close. It could have been a lot worse. Um, but in this situation, so what had happened was um, the player characters were captured, and like I said, they were able to escape. Uh, they had their, they found their equipment, which was nearby, and they arrived down into the dragon's lair while Bag of Nails was trying to negotiate for the return of his son. So the son was at the dragon's feet, and the dragon was kind of being a jerk, so he would let his acidic drool kind of drip onto um, Bag of Nails' son, and it would, you know, cause him pain, and you see all these, like, burn marks from the acid all over his body. <clears throat> but I made it really clear that, you know, he couldn't even cry out in pain, he was so weak. Um, that there was, you know, a flinch and barely a whimper. And um, so the, the player playing the sorcerer character, um, the, the newer player, um, just said, well, I'm going to throw a fireball into the room. And uh, <clears throat> it's like, okay, are you sure? And he's like, yep, I'm going to fireball, I'm going to catch them all. Well, to catch them all involved killing Bag of Nails' son. You know, he was incapacitated, there was just no way that he was going to get a saving throw off, and it's like, well, you know, he's dead. Um, that's just way, way too much damage. He's, he's dead. Um, so, as a consequence, and I thought it was important that there be a consequence, because there was a, <clears throat> there was actually a peaceful solution uh, to all of this. The, the dragon would have agreed to release Bag of Nails and his son if the player characters agreed to go through and, you know, collect these puzzle cubes. And even if the player characters reneged on that, and went back and um, actually, you know, started attacking the dragon, that would have been fine, but there was still a peaceful way to get out of it, we just never would have known because of the somewhat zealous nature, overzealous nature of some of the, the, the players. But Bag of Nails' son was killed. And to me, it's like, okay, that's, that's a bit too much, um, because that didn't have to happen. You know, there are other spells that could have been cast, other things that could have been done to have protected this person who was important to another NPC, and this other NPC was willing to do whatever they had to do to get their son back. And it was a story that I kind of wanted to tell, because if the players would have helped Bag of Nails, then he could have been an ally for them going through uh, the rest of Amu. And he could have been a really important ally, He could have, because he would have scouted a bunch of these uh, shrines, he could have shown the players exactly where the shrines were, or at least, you know, the next few of them and could have sort of given an idea of some of the things that they might encounter, because he may have tried a couple of them before he was forced to retreat. So he could have been a really valuable ally, but the one player recklessly ended up killing, you know, his sole reason for everything that was going on. So Bag of Nails targeted that character and only that character until he was knocked unconscious. And I was even saying, you know, honestly, he would be so enraged that he may end up firing one more arrow into you even after you're unconscious. I didn't do it. It was more of a threat that I wasn't actually going to follow through on anyway. But it's just one of those things that, you know, you, you, there there got to be consequences, right? So if you're going to recklessly throw, like, you know, an area of effect spell in there, then, and it ends up, you know, um, killing one of the potential allies that you could have had, that's a problem. So I had, um, you know, Bag of Nails fly into a rage and just targeted um, the sorcerer with everything that he had. He had a few, um, you know, poison-tipped arrows, and he used, um, he used enough, he used as many, he had, th I think he had three or four um, that I had given him, and he used at least two of them on, um, on the sorcerer to, to take him down sort of thing. So it's just one of those situations where, again, you know, there's got to be, you got to think about these things. Uh, also, when when he was talking about how, well, you know, I use a lot of area effects, and 
and sometimes the players get caught in them. I made it very clear that, um, you know, if it's going to be a damaging area of effect spell, that, you know, the assumption is going to be that you are always going to position it in such a way as to avoid hitting party members. And I just like, you know, it's like, and, you know, that's the way that it's going to be. You know, I don't want someone new coming into the group and then just start, you know, blasting the other characters, the other players with their spells. So if you cast a fireball, it is going to be done in such a way, unless it's completely unavoidable, it's going to be done in such a way that you're catching only the enemies and not the player characters, unless they say, don't worry about it, I can take it. So just again some things so if you have area of effect spells think them through and make sure you're not hitting your fellow party members with them because that's just again it's a bad way to you know introduce yourself to a group doesn't give a great first impression and it's kind of make it so that these other players may not want you back at the game and i would hate to see that because again this player is very enthusiastic about DD, &D, and that's something that i think is great and that's something that i want to see more of but I don't want it to be at the expense of other players' um, fun. Like, I wouldn't want to have one of my established players who's been there since more or less the beginning um, end up leaving the game because they just are tired of their characters getting you know, caught up in things or having things kind of go against them when they didn't need to. It happens on occasion, and that's, that's fine, but at the same time, you know, I don't want one person's fun to negatively impact the rest of the group's fun. Uh, so that's something that is very important. So anyway, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Um, if you have any, if you've ever run into situations similar to this, um, and if there's any other uh, just simple sort of etiquette rules that you can think of, um, please let me know. And if you have any stories that go along with them, I'd love to you know to hear from those as well. Uh, if you do have a YouTube channel and you have some stories that you kind of wanted to tell about you know issues where the player characters actions cause you know uh, a bit of a kerfuffle uh you know do a video response and if you do let me know and i'll uh, definitely watch it so anyway thank you guys again very much uh, for watching i hope you enjoyed and we'll see you next time